Okay guys, we are officially one day before I am leaving for this trip. Have I packed a stitch of clothing? I picked out books, no clothing packed. So I need to do that. I used to be such a pro at traveling because I used to have to fly every week for work to my client site. So I used to be so much better at it than I am now. Um, so I'm not gonna have my super efficient little tiny suitcase. I'm just gonna use like this big ass one. So as you can see, mostly the same, but I am adding Ragged Alice in here because um, I got approved for an arc on the day of the release. And when that happens, I don't feel compelled to review it right away because if they wanted it early, they should have like, it's advanced reader copy. They should have given it to me in advance. But I did go ahead and order a physical copy that showed up the same day. So I don't know. I feel like I kind of just want to go ahead and read it. Plus it's set in Wales. It's like a paranormal type mystery thing. So it's appropriate. And then I should also show you that I am taking the, um, the, the fruit of our bounty here in Nashville. So a goo goo cluster is like a local candy treat. So I'm going to take some boxes of that for the war room that we're going to be in. So yeah, I also got these like little mini ones. We'll see how those go. I'm all checked in, so that's good. I just saw the bookstore in case I have a moment to go do that. I'm feeling super anxious about this flight for some reason, which is unusual for me. So I'm gonna go have some wine. I'm sure that's a super healthy response. Um, and start reading a little bit. I think that'll help me chill out. Okay, so I made it. Uh, in terms of reading, I got basically nothing done on the plane, and that's good news because that means I actually got to sleep a little bit. Uh, I would say this is one of my most successful sleeping ventures on um, a flight to Europe. I'm usually pretty bad at sleeping on a plane, but I would say I got like four hours of, let's say, like nap adjacent sleep. So I don't think I got full rim, but I definitely rested a little bit and I've got about two hours before I need to go into the office. So I'm gonna, I probably shouldn't actually sleep cause I need to get on time, but I'm gonna lay down at least and not do any more reading. So uh, yeah, flight over was basically a bust. I read five pages of Ragged Alice. They were intriguing pages, but uh, that was it. So. Watch this space once I get caught up on some sleep. I think I'll get some reading done. So I was unpacking and realized that I forgot my toothbrush and uh, the only one at the co-op is this beaut for ages three to five. Yeah, it's gonna be an adventuresome uh, morning routine this week. So this Saturday we are off to Brighton. Um, the pavilions are one of the only kind of like big sites I've never seen in the UK. So I'm excited to check that out and uh, it's like an hour train ride, so I should hopefully get some reading done on the way there and back. I think I'm gonna read Promise and Death. Sounds light, pulpy, good for a train. This is so cool. It's kind of bizarre. It reminds me a little bit of um, the Biltmore in the sense of it, it's just such a weird architectural style to see in this context. Yeah, it's really pretty. Check that out. Ah, oh, beautiful. I wish I had planned more time because this is just so lovely. I would love to just sit down and read. Okay, I had my tour inside and yeah, it was, um, Really interesting. It, the history was not what I remembered it being. I thought that this was something that Albert, Prince Albert, had been in charge of, but I'm wondering if that's the museum or if I'm just getting everything totally mixed up. But anyway, it was uh, Regency era, George IV, and the price of admission is honestly worth it just to see this crazy ass chandelier that they have with a dragon at the top of it. I am too much of a uh, rule follower to have gotten a picture because there's no photography allowed inside, but suffice it to say, I will show you guys a picture. I'll put it in here somewhere. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. So that was worth the ticket price alone, I think. So yeah, now I think I'm gonna walk back to the train station, but yeah, it was really cool. Like I said, it was George IV who really built it sort of as like his, his hang spot. 
the outside is obviously inspired by India and then the interior is Chinese inspired but it's like very faux version of all of that obviously because he had never been to either um, and I hadn't realized that John Nash was so involved in the construction of it but it was sold by Victoria to the town of Brighton so it's the only royal residence or palace that's owned by a city and not the state or the crown so that was cool yeah I just enjoyed it it was a good time the first time I have ever seen a palm tree in England growing so that was exciting and uh yeah Brighton overall is super cute I don't know that I would come back but it was worth you know a trip down here just to see this guy and um I'm gonna get back on the train and keep reading Promise and Death it's a really good one actually um you know, the In-Death series can be a little inconsistent, but this so far this one I think is really good. And, uh, you know, she's investigating a fellow cop's murder, so that's always very personal to her. And surprising no one, I think there is now going to be a Rourke connection. So we'll see how that unfolds. The difference between what public transportation looks like in Europe versus the US is like truly astounding. Look how beautiful that is. Okay guys, let's do this. It's the mothership. guys I'm finding too much stuff it's not good for my pocketbook but I definitely have found a few things that I think will be arriving in the mail for folks soon so stay tuned yes there's a whole display of the poison pen editions Ugh, I need well I don't need anything but I want to get one of these and Coralie Bickford Smith of course and then this is the book I had to wait like a month for and it's just sitting right here of course and some facsimiles and all of these Varego modern classics gorgeous I have these editions for some of my stuff too I do not need any more mugs but I am obsessed with this penguin series of them that's so cool there's lots of cool bookish things for gifts here I came I saw I conquered Okay, so I'm back from seeing the sights. Oh gosh, guys. So I think I only took you into Waterstones. Yeah, I only took you into Waterstones because I felt awkward uh, trying to film in these small bookstores, but I did get a number of things. I got a few things that are gifts, though I think by the time you guys are seeing this, they probably will no longer be a surprise. So I guess I'll show you that too. Um, and I went a little bit ham. I got like, <laughs> a lot of uh, murder mystery type things like there was a lot of so there was a couple of authors I've been looking for that I hadn't seen in a, a store in the states before and um, there's also just a few like I was kind of having an eye like there's a whole display of murder mysteries and I have been just like really intensely and specifically looking for isolated house mysteries lately so I grabbed a few things that I think would qualify in that genre but anyway let me show you what i got okay so i got a few things as gifts um what i hope are all unique to the uk they at least are ones i haven't seen stateside before so um i got vengeful for somebody i got a gathering of shadows for somebody and i got the name of the wind for somebody this is the one that i am most worried is not unique to the uk though it specifically has the uk address on the back uh, for the website and the price is only in pounds so I'm hoping that this is unique but I'm not as familiar with these editions but so those are some gifts that I got and then for me okay <laughs> I was a little sad there weren't more facsimiles around for me to grab but this is actually um, different than the normal facsimile edition this is specifically I think meant this was like a um, a tie-in to a movie so you can see on the back it has stills from the movie that was adapted like it was based off of the murder of Roger Ackroyd so this is at least an edition I don't have and have not seen before so I thought that was really cool there was another one in this line that I ultimately didn't get because if I'm being honest the mystery itself didn't sound super great to me but you know there you go then Cyril Hare is a author that I have been wanting to try and there's a different one, I think it's called With a Bear Bodkin or Bodkin Bear, I forget, um, that it sounds like an isolated house mystery. And then this one definitely is. It is like at Christmas time and they're snowed in. So 
I am excited to give this a try, and that's an author I've been wanting to, to get, and I haven't seen them stateside. This is one I have never heard of before, but again, it sounds like it's playing on uh, kind of isolated house tropes, and specifically in this call-out, it says Sansom is both celebrating and sending up the golden age of detective novels when, in the 1930s, Dorothy L. Sayers and Agatha Christie were the queens of crime. So, I'm thinking that this is probably like a kind of meta or knowing take on that genre but I like I said I've never heard of this before and part of the joy of going into um, bookstores in different countries is sort of like encountering authors you may not have heard of so I, I wanted to give that a try. Then I got this is a paperback copy and you guys know I always do prefer hardcovers but I'm just gonna have to deal because I've really just not seen the Rook in hardcover and I love love this cover. So I don't have a, I've never had a physical copy of the Rook. I have an e-copy, but I'm so delighted, so delighted to have this as my physical copy because I just love the foiling. Just a super cute version of this. Then I am, sorry, I'm just like, I'm, a, I'm marveling at how crazy I went here. Um, P.D. James, Sleep No More. So this, uh, I tried one P.D. James in the past, did not like it. This is a collection of six novellas, and if you guys know me, you know that I really love novellas, and often when I'm first trying an author, that is how I will try them, is with their short stuff, to get kind of a sense of what they do. So I think that this would be a good way to sort of try again with her. The fact that there's like an isolated house on the cover makes me hopeful that at least one of them will have that element, and yeah, I just felt like this was so pretty, and I'm, I'm just excited to give her another chance. You probably already saw this one, which is Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. The series that I actually want to read next is Prince of Fools, but neither of these series is available in non-mass market um, easily in the States. So I went ahead and picked up the first one in this series, which I believe is the Empire of something or what is it? The, oh, it doesn't say, but this is one that, uh, oh, okay, The Broken Empire. There you go. This is... The first book in that. So I'm also going to get Prince of Fools, I think, from uh, Book Depository. I didn't see it in any of the shops I was at, but um, I'm excited to give this a try. Sorry, my room service got here so much quicker than I was expecting it to. Um, the last one is from, like I showed you guys, I think, the Poison Pen line. Oh, no, here. Okay, interesting. So in the UK, this is British Library? Huh, okay. In the States, this is published like the exact same cover same line, I think, under the Poison Pen Press. Interesting. Okay, so same same idea, but slightly different publisher. Anyway, uh, this, again, Country House Mysteries, and these are from the Golden Age of Detective Fiction, like they're, they're of the period, so I am excited to get to these at some point. Okay, time for bed. Um, I just went down and went to the pub with my coworkers, got into a little bit of an intense political debate accidentally, the joys of being a liberal uh, amongst usually very conservative people. We had very good, I think, civil discourse. Um, so that was good. I probably should go straight. I'm not that tired yet and I need to be because I need to get up in about six and a half hours. But um, I think I might read a little bit more Promised in Death. So I got, um, I think about 60% of the way through it between all my travels today. And it's really good. It's a it's a very good in depth installment so far. Um, as with any series, they can be a little hit or miss, but this one is is I think going to be a four star, um, barring some real change of events. The other things that I wanted to get read on this trip included Year One by Nora Roberts, uh, The Bride Test by Helen Huang, uh, let's see, Ragged Alice by Gareth Powell, and then I brought all of those other, like, I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, you know, like, I just brought way too many options and had the equivalent of my eyes being bigger than my stomach, but for books. So my eyes being bigger than my brain? I don't know. I don't know how I thought I was going to get through all these books. <laughs> oh, the eternal optimist. Um, so, or maybe it's just the fear of running out of things to read, but so I will have definitely, I will definitely get through an, a promised in death. So that will be my in death for the month. Um, I need to read the bride test just for arc reasons and timing. I need to read uh, year one because that was my mug pick. So I think if I get those three done, I'll be good. And then I think as a stretch goal, if I can get this read, 
I'll be doing pretty good. I think that that's possible, assuming that the project that I'm working on, it's happening tonight. I have to get up to see how it went in the morning. Assuming that it goes okay and I don't need to work late, I think I will get some reading time tomorrow night and Monday night. So I think I can probably, I think between that and then the plane, I think I can get through those four books, I think. We'll see, but anyway. Tomorrow we're going, after we verify that nothing exploded with this migration, um, tomorrow we're gonna go to Rochester and go see the castle and go to a pub um, with a couple of our colleagues from the London office. I really love our London colleagues. They're just so hospitable. Um, they came over to do some work on the project a month ago and we had a great time while they were at our office. And so, um, yeah, they've been showing us a good time while we're here. So we're gonna go out together um, and, and like all of us go do a little sightseeing. So stay tuned for that. Look at the pretty, pretty church here. We've got Victorian over here. And then, oh look, the Norman invasion. It's a nice hodgepodge. Bookstore called Baggins. I love this. How to travel incognito. <laughs> There's a secret door. like a maze in here guys like I'm afraid to even try to dig in because there's too much I think this is the fantasy section see Gollum Probably. They I'm gonna follow you around so you can steal oh. anything just got a bunch of fudge and curds Let's see. Let's see. Whew, guys I am white today so um, I don't think I told you this at the beginning of this trip, but I got up um, early because we were doing our project this morning. So I was on a bunch of conference calls this morning and I didn't fall asleep until like three o'clock last night. So I'm tired from that uh, and kind of doing some work this morning. But then we ended up going to Rochester. Our work colleagues took us, uh, that was sort of the, the plan. And it was a really lovely day. Um, I think you guys have seen a lot of it um but yeah just like going to the cathedral and the castle was really neat uh and then we went to that amazing book sh bookshop and then we had like one of the most delicious just like roast lunches it was so good i had a guinness which i haven't had in a really long time and um yeah it was just lovely but now i'm back i'm gonna do some work and it's gonna be a pretty low-key evening i think i'm just gonna get some room service and and chill um I'd probably try to go to bed a little bit early so hopefully I get the things I need to finish up what I need to do for work here pretty quick and then I can then I can chillax uh I did read a little bit on the train I read a little bit more promises and death I think I'm going to try to finish that one up tonight uh which I think is is definitely doable so anyway I'll talk to you guys later hey guys I don't really remember the last time we talked um, but today was a Monday and it was the first work day with the project that I've been working on in place. And so it was very busy, quite stressful, but the good news is last night I finished Promises and Death. I actually stayed up too late reading it because it was really good. I was very engaged. It's, it's one of the best in death books I've read in um, a while. So it was good to just sort of like remember what I really love about the series. Um, yeah, it was just a really nice blend of like character development. Um, I think it progressed some of the macro plot stuff pretty well. And then the actual mystery I found to be like one of the better ones in the series in terms of just on a mechanical level, it, it worked really well, I thought. So yeah, it was it was definitely a good read. I'm realizing I'm just like not gonna get nearly as much reading on this trip as I'd kind of hoped but I might, which is good. It's because I've been, um, you know, enjoying being here and also uh, enjoying time with my colleagues and 
just frankly, this has not gone <laughs> as smoothly as I'd hoped it might, or not even that, it just has been more time consuming um, than I thought it might be. So yeah, but that's that's why I was on the trip. I mean, it was, it was a work trip, and so I've been doing work. And um, yeah, anyway, I think I might read a couple of chapters of The Bride Test tonight, maybe? But maybe not. Maybe I'm going to reread because actually rereading sounds really nice. Today was so intense. It might be good to just have a little chillax time. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Okay, it is the last morning of my time here. Reading has really not happened much this week, guys, which is fine. I've just worked a lot more than I thought I was going to, but it's been a good trip. Really good time with my coworkers. Um, we were working very hard yesterday on some very uh, frustrating issues. Made some good progress. Uh, one of my coworkers knows that I love uh, scones. It's one of the things I miss um, from when I uh, briefly got to live here. And um, yeah, she made me some homemade scones with um, some clotted cream and some lemon curd, uh, which is not something I normally get to eat. So that was a real treat. And then we also uh, went out last night to a circus themed bar. Um, I don't think it was quite what any of us were expecting. I was expecting more food and more of a show. I thought it was like a dinner show. Uh, it wasn't totally, but, um, I don't know. It was good company. We went with a bunch of one of my coworkers' friends came with us and, um, and yeah, they were a fun group. So we had a night of, uh, carousing, which is great. Um, the highlight of the show was definitely, uh, what we affectionately now refer to as the fire tits, um, in which the woman took off her bra. They were pasties with tassels on them that she then set alight and twirled around. Um, you know, I and I can see boobs anytime I want, but um, my boobs can't do that. So I feel like that was uh, money well spent. Those were professional tits. So, <laughs> so that's what we did. I've got to go to the airport today. Um, I'm hoping I get to re-enter the country because the little thing wouldn't let me check in because it said the U.S. was still validating my passport. And I'm like, girl, you gonna let me go home, please? Maybe? Yeah, anyway, I am gonna do a little bit more work and then I'm gonna grab my shit and hit the road. And since I don't need to sleep on this flight, I'm hoping I might actually get a little bit more reading done. So we will find out. So we made it to the airport. Uh, I survived with, um, you know, only a mildly invasive pat down. So we'll, we'll call that a win for security. Uh, I'm also massively early because it wouldn't let me check in for some reason. I was worried I was gonna have to wait for a long time, but now it took me 15 minutes to get through security at Heathrow. So, um, got plenty of time to kill. I am gonna have lunch and I've got about 18 pounds left. So I'm going to spend that at a bookshop. Wish me luck. I, I did not even attempt to, to stay no carb on this trip. So I'm enjoying this last little bit of indulgence. I feel awful and I'm excited to get back, but one last hurrah. Let's do this. It's always so fascinating to me to see what the best sellers are. So I'm gonna check this out. I'm very intrigued by this Nine Perfect Strangers thing. It sounds sort of like a adjacent to a isolated house type thing, but from Leanna Moriarty. So we'll check it out. I love this cover of Bad Blood. Yeah, I've been enjoying, I feel like the paperback covers here are so much nicer. Okay, so I uh, did some damage in the bookstore. I got two books because it was buy one, get one half. And I found two things that were intriguing to me, things I wouldn't normally pick up. And that's to me what your leftover foreign currency is really for at a bookstore. So I'll show you that. It was also cool to see the Agatha Christie's there just because um, that was my first time ever reading Agatha Christie was just after I had been studying abroad um, in Cambridge and I just went to the bookstore and was trying to get rid of my pounds and said, oh yeah, I've always, I've always heard that she's so great and to just see her basically in the same place I first encountered her, which is Heathrow with uh, random good. leftover pounds was, was kind of fun. So anyway, let me get to my gate and then I'll show you what I got. Okay, I got two books. So first I got Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. I think I was talking about this earlier. So I don't think it's an actual 
murder mystery in the middle of nowhere, but it's one luxury retreat in the middle of nowhere, ten days where no one can leave, nine strangers seeking perfection, each discovering the perfect lie. So it seems like it's at least mysterious, and they're all cooped up together. So I thought I'd take the risk, because it was buy one, get one half. And then the main one I got was Sleep by C.L. Taylor. Seven guests, seven secrets, one knows, do you dare to something. And it looks like it's like a little isolated inn type murder mystery that is my actual jam so very excited for both of these and i would never pick these up without these pounds and that's to me like what this kind of money is for is just try something new (sighs) okay guys i made it back sorry no last footage from me deplaning but it was a relatively uh, uneventful trip back. So I was flying British Airways, which I always enjoy. Like if you mostly fly airlines that are based out of the US, you just forget that like most of the rest of the industrial world doesn't like have to travel the way that we do on airplanes. Like it's just so much more civilized. The food is way better. The attendants are nicer. The seats are more reasonably sized. There's like consistently updated technology. It's just nice. I mean, they gave me a Magnum ice cream bar, for God's sake. So anyway, um, so that was fine. We did have an air pocket drop at one point that literally was the worst I've ever encountered. It was in our descent, and the entire plane screamed. It was so scary. But luckily, that lasted for like one minute, and then we were good. Anyway, in terms of reading, the things that I got done. So first, let me show you this bad boy here. That was nice and personal. Um, I did finish Ragged Alice. I had read like 10 pages of this on the way over before I fell asleep. So this was kind of a disappointment, I got to tell you. Um, I'm sure I will talk about this more at some point in a wrap up. But basically, this either needed to be shorter, longer, or have like a better, like, amazing payoff at the end. So it just ended up being kind of in the middle because it wasn't really any of those things. It was just sort of like, Not long enough to like get real, like to build out a lot of the things that it kind of hinted at to like not short enough to just like pick a couple of conflicts and go from there. Like it could have just been like, hey, I'm just going to have like one main conflict and do that. Or like if the end reveal had just been like, oh, it would have been amazing. But yeah, so it was just sort of not my favorite, basically. But, you know, I got that. That was on my TBR. I needed to read it. So I did that. I also read The Bride Test, which I really enjoyed. And um, yeah, it was an, I was crying on the plane. It was an emotional reading experience. I'll probably talk about that more in my Asian Readathon uh, vlog, which I'll film right after this. So, uh, you know, little insight into the filming process. But anyway, suffice it to say, I think that it may be a better book than The Kiss Quotient. But I probably liked the kiss quotient better just because the angst factor wasn't as high. Though I did really like that this is sort of like a forced proximity slash like fake relationship type thing. And the characters are so good. Esme slash Mai, I think May, Mai. She, oh, like I love her so much. And I also love Kai, but they just like, yeah, it was, it was a little angsty and I was, yeah, anyway, it was four stars. I really enjoyed it. I probably just liked the Kiss Quotient better, even though, like I said, I think this might be a better book. So I think that's where I'm going to leave you for this vlog. That was my trip to London. It is 7.40 here in Nashville. It feels like it is 1.40 to me. And um, I still need to do a couple of hours of work. So I'm going to do that uh, because there was, you know, a smooth hundred emails in my inbox by the time I got off that plane. Lovely. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to leave you guys here. I hope you enjoyed a little insight into my trip. I've never tried to vlog a trip before, so I'll be interested to see how all this footage turns out. But yeah, I guess I will just say that if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I will just talk to you later. Bye.